I started as a student at Groves in 1999, which was grade three for me. My behaviour in primary school would not be the best behaviour, I guess would be a good way of putting it. I was a bit of a brat towards my teachers. Year eight to 10, I would say my behaviour got a lot worse. I, because of uh, what was happening on the inside of me, I was angry because I hadn't had a strong father figure in my life since the age of five. So I was, yeah, I was really angry at my father. Although it didn't show and I didn't really know that's what it was, I was still angry and that anger manifested, I guess, on the outside and governed my behaviour. On grade eight to 10, I, I believe my teachers thought I was a bit of a brat, someone who didn't really care about anything else than having a bit of fun. A, a good example of what I used to do before I gave my life to God would have been the church I was at at the time I ran a food bank and so they had a big stack of eggs uh, piled up and so we grabbed as many eggs as we could to have a bit of fun and we, we went around and started throwing them at, at things, at houses and stuff like that. At school it, it wasn't so much running a, around uh, outside of classes, it was more just uh, how could I put it? Annoying teachers. Because uh, it, it's probably uh, a bit twisted, but it, it's funny to see reactions of people. And I guess that's, why, that's my motives. Year 11, uh, in uh, it probably the mid section of year 11, I fully committed my life to God. Because I, I said before, I was. A Christ, I was brought up in a Christian family. I knew of God and everything. I knew what I was meant to do, how I was meant to do it and stuff like that. But I, I fully committed my life to God. And that happened at youth. I went to youth. I wasn't really a regular member at youth. But my mum sent me one night. And yeah, I gave all my, my anger, my problems over to God. Because like, there was an altar call and I gave it all over to God. And from there on out, I decided to live my life how I knew I should. I didn't really go to youth much, but she sent me and that night there was an altar call and stuff and it was there when I, when I went up for the altar call that I laid down my burdens, I laid down my problems, I laid down my anger to God and he took that from me and I wasn't such an angry person anymore. And yeah, from there on out I, I decided to commit my life fully to God because I'd, be, I'd grown up in a Christian family. but. Like I knew of God, but I didn't really know him. And from then on out, I decided to get to know God. I remember two teachers for a particular reason. Although like all teachers impacted me, the two teachers I, I can say I remember the most would be Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Reynolds. Because I guess they were a bit of a, a schooling mother figure for me because they showed love and compassion to me and I could... I could feel it kind of thing. Uh, despite my problems, I, I could, despite how I treated them and how I acted and stuff like that, they still showed me, yeah, they showed me love and compassion. So yeah, so I remember them the most. No, knowing that people noticed my change before I even to told them, it gives me a sense that I was doing something right because I committed my life to God and hadn't told anyone really yet. The advice I'd give to someone in my, the same position I went through, the same things I went through when I was younger, you, you couldn't really tell them how they, they could change and stuff. You'd need to give them a story of how they could relate. So I'd tell them my testimony so that they would have something to relate to, something so they they would, so that they would know that other people go through the same things that they go through and tell them that there is a way out. There is a way out of their, their problems. They, de they don't need to keep doing what they do because, yeah, there is a way out. And the way out I found was God. Something that really matters to me now is God. And because God told me at one point in my life when I was deciding what career path I would take, he told me that... Oh, I'll just say what he told me. Uh, he wants me to build up things to glorify his name. And from that I gather he wants me to be a pastor and that's what's on my priorities now. I, I want to 
I want to be the best I can be. So God really matters to me now and my career, which is going to be a pastor. Yes, I, I, I do slip up with and fall back into old habits. I, on one occasion in the morning before school, just a few weeks back, uh, me and a few mates, we were passing around the football, having a bit of fun, and one of us, or I, yeah, one of my mates kicked the football and it went over into the basketball courts. It being the morning the basketball courts were locked and we all were so eager to continue in our fun that I decided to slip under because I'm, I'm quite small. So I decided to slip under a hole in the fence because there was a bit of a, a hole. So I, I slipped under and went to get the football and another one of my mates jumped over. While we are in there, Mr Schultz came down. He's our deputy principal and he came down and um, he gave us a bit of a growling and we got in trouble. And yeah, so I definitely do slip back into old habits. After I slip up and fall back into those old habits, oh, I feel bad because it's not something I should be doing, but each circumstance I believe there's something to learn from it. So I kind of look at the circumstances that I've done, the things I've done, and try and figure out what, what I can learn from it, what I can learn from each situation. So I guess something that I, I, I do when I do fall back into old habits is look at the situation and sit, try and see what I can take out from this so I, I don't do them things. So yeah, what, what I took out from that was to think before I act because I didn't really think when I did that. I was severely surprised to be chosen as school captain uh, on the actual awards night where they were telling us who was going to be school captain. Yeah, they obviously announced my name. I was really shocked because at the time I was actually speaking to the person next to me saying, oh, it's going to be so-and-so, I, I bet you. It's not, it's not going to be anyone else, it's going to be them. And when they announced my name, me thinking that's going to be someone else and it's actually me. I was like, are you serious? And yeah, I've, I've used my position as school captain for God in the sense that at times I walk around, or I would have done this even, even if I wasn't school captain, but I, I've walked around and because I'm known to um, the majority of people at the school because of my role as school captain, I, I I can speak to people and then like they can speak to me because they know me kind of thing and yeah I, I speak to them and sometimes I see people down and I go over and speak to them and yeah so just just being there for some people. At the beginning of year 12 the student leadership team for 2008 were sent down to a Christian schools leadership conference in Canberra and the most predominant thing that we learnt down there was to consciously analyse our worldview because it governs so much about us. They taught us to be aware of, of what we're, how we perceive things because, because it's, it's so important to look at things from a Christian pers Christian's perspective because if we don't, we're not being a Christian. Because I would summarise my time at Grows as a good thing because if, if I was at a different school, if I was at a public school, if I was at, even at a different Christian school, I would be completely different. And I don't want that. I want to be the same person I am now because I believe the person I am now is the person God wants me to be. Because obviously I still need to change and make things new in Him. But yeah, I wouldn't want to do anything different because I like who I am.